The recognized gentleman from California. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment at the desk. It's labeled EJS 10. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 3309 offered by Mr. Waxman of California. Without objection to read, the amendment is dispensed with, and the gentleman is recognized for five minutes in support of his amendment. The amendment we would require the FCC, while evaluating and processing consumer complaints concerning wireline, wireline, wireless, broadband, broadcast, cable, and satellite services, to present such complaints in a publicly available and searchable database on its website. The database would include information on the topics of the complaints and the names of the service providers. The FCC would have the flexibility to exclude duplicative complaints regarding the content of a particular broadcast. This amendment is consistent with the goal of increasing transparency at the FCC. Currently, the FCC makes available only aggregated data on a quarterly basis regarding consumer complaints, but these quarterly reports do not reveal the names of the service providers about whom the complaints are filed and is not in a format that can be readily used and sorted by the public. This amendment would simply direct the FCC to make the data they already collect more accessible to consumers. Consumers have a right to know which providers are subject to the most complaints and for what reasons and with, uh, without having to file a Freedom of Information Act request. If a particular provider is the subject of numerous complaints about unfair billing practices, consumers should be able to have access to such information. At the same time, the amendment would provide the FCC with the ability to exclude duplicative, duplicative complaints regarding a particular broadcast, which can be very numerous, such as, such as for complaints about broadcast indecency. As the report released yesterday, yesterday by the Republican staff illustrates, the Commission is overwhelmed with broadcast indecency complaints. This is a pro-consumer, pro-transparency amendment, and I urge my colleagues to support its adoption. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back the balance of his time. Chair recognizes himself uh, regarding the amendment and has a question for counsel. Uh, on the amendment, uh, which I hope we can work out. I, I would just point out, I just saw this amendment this morning for the first time. Um, if, if we were to change this amendment on line three to uh, delete after complaints and pick it back up on line six with the commission, would that have any effect in terms of changing the authority of the commission or what's trying to be accomplished here without having to be specific on all of these individual entities? No, sir. All right. Then I would suggest to the offer, the maker of the amendment um, that I believe our side would be willing to accept this amendment if we could strike the words on line three after, concern, after complaints through Mr. line Cameron. six uh, on Would determine. you yield just for a moment? I, I would be glad to yield to the gentlelady. Why do you want to strike those? What's the purpose of it? Well, I think there I, are... I, I mean, I say this sincerely. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's something that's spelled out. And um, why do you want to strike the, spe uh, the specifics out? Wireline, wireless, broadband, broadcast, cable, satellite services, and other such services? Well, I think there are two reasons. One... We don't want to alter in any way the Commission's authority. And two, uh, going forward, if this, is, uh, if this uh, legislation becomes law, um, you might have other technologies that emerge. I mean, we're dealing with a 1934 Communications Act, mm -hmm. and this would be open then to any, without delineation, it any has such complaints. other services, though. And I don't know. I, I, just, I was just curious as to why. Hmm. Yeah, there would there would have to be a determination on the other services by the commission. Wouldn't be a matter of law. I don't think this does any violence to the amendment. No. Chairman. If the gentleman from California would be willing to accept that change but, or Mr. work, Chairman, with I, us. I think I think we should work together on it, and um, okay. I, I think we're getting close. Why don't I withdraw the amendment and see if we can yeah. agree to it? Okay. Work, work out an agreement. Without objection, the gentleman withdraws the amendment. We'd be happy to work with you. Uh, I don't think this is a major matter we can't resolve between here and full. So.
I thank the gentleman for his cooperation. Uh, I'll turn to this side, Mr. Kinzinger, for an amendment. Right. Hey, Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. Clerk will report the uh, amendment. Amendment to H.R. 3309, offered by Mr. Kinzinger of Illinois. Without objection, the reading of the amendment is dispensed with, and the gentleman from Illinois is recognized for five minutes in support of the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm offering an amendment to put into law something which I believe is, is fairly simple and is, in fact, something Chairman Jankowski has been able to do for the most part uh, to do at the FCC. My amendment simply states that the FCC must complete all actions necessary to submit to the Federal Register any amendment or adopted rule within 45 days of its adoption just to submit to the Federal Registry. The deadline does not necessarily mean that such an order would become effective in that amount of time, but it's a reasonable period of time for the Commission to submit such a document. This straightforward and simple amendment is another example of good government, which will put into law what Chairman Jankowski has been able to accomplish for some time now, as it is my understanding that the average length of time for these publications currently stands at just over 37 days. Again, my amendment would simply require the FCC to complete all actions necessary for such a document to be published in the Federal Register. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. The gentleman yields back his time. Is there a discussion on this amendment? Mr. Doyle. Yeah, I wonder, uh, uh, with the strike the last word, Mr. Chairman, I wonder if uh, the author right of the now. amendment could uh, just answer some questions to clarify his, his amendment. Um, I want to ask you, uh, for the purpose of clarification, that this amendment does not hold the FCC accountable for delays in other area of, of process. For, for example, if o OMB is slow or if the Federal Register Office is backed up, uh, it just means that the FCC needs to do its part within the deadline. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. And, and then secondly, your, your amendment ties the FCC action to adoption. Uh, but all FCC activity is tied to the actual release of an item, not the adoption of the item. I hope that we can work together between now and full committee so that the deadline is tied to the release date uh, and not the date of adoption so that we can be consistent. M Mr. Doyle, I appreciate that. And I'll, uh, uh, given that we have an opportunity, I think, to work together for this, I will respectfully withdraw my amendment mm -hmm. in anticipation of working with the uh, other side. Yeah. I, I, I thank you very much and that. look forward to is, working. Is yeah. there any objection to the gentleman withdrawing his amendment? If not, it is withdrawn, and we will try and work this issue out as well as we go into full committee markup.